Are you tired of colours? Are you fed up of all your paints? Stuck in a hobby rut? Well, we might have the solution for you. My name's Guy. And I'm Hattie. And you're watching Midwinter Minis. And we're about to set ourselves a painting challenge using these Blood Bowl Minis. So we're not only going to be using a tiny selection of colours to paint each team, I'm also going to paint the exact opposite of Hattie's colour scheme. Are they going to end up looking explosively different? Or explosive diarrhoea? <laughs> These were sent to us by friend and longtime supporter of the channel, Jeremy, and they are going to be used for a charitable fundraiser later on this year. We've got some lizard dudes and some spooky boys. But right now, they're going to be our experimental guinea pigs. And it's my turn first. Right, first things first, I need to sort these bases out. If you've bought a Blood Bowl team in recent years, you may have had this same problem. The bases are fully slotted, but the minis aren't. So what am I supposed to do with the huge gap in the middle of my base? I can't exactly just chuck some texture paint on and hope for the best. Here's three ways that you can hide that gap. The first is using Milliput. Just mix together a very small amount of each part, roll it into a sausage, push it into the gap and smooth it out. Easy peasy. You can do this if you've already stuck your mini in the slot, or you can chop the little connecting points off their feet and stick the mini on once the bases are done, which is what I'm going to do. If you don't have Milliput, you could also use any other air drying clay. Exactly the same method as the Miller putt, but this time you don't have to mix it together and it's a different colour. Ooh. The third method is a little different, but even easier than the others. Get yourself a piece of paper. Literally any piece of paper. Flip your base upside down and draw around the top of it. Cut your paper circle out and glue it onto the base with PVA. But we've covered up the hole where the ball goes. No worries. Grab a toothpick and stick it through the hole from underneath and it should be the perfect size to bring the hole back like it never left. Then you can continue basing how you want. But for this method, you will need to cut the little pegs off the mini's feet before you stick them down later. All I'm going to do now is chuck some texture paint on and leave the bases until I'm ready to paint them later. Now onto the minis. Naturally, I've chosen to use this Halloween-y palette of purple, green, orange, gray, and white for the ghost. Many moons ago, I painted another Blood Bowl team when I first started working at Games Workshop, but it took me forever to finish them, so we'll be using the slap chop method for ease and speed. The way I'm going to do it is by underpainting the minis by dry brushing with grey and then white over a black undercoat, which should give the translucent colours I'm going to put on top a lot of depth. Since I'm painting the bases separately, I'm going to mount my minis on these lollipop sticks because otherwise they'll be really awkward to hold. I'm going to begin by doing a heavy dry brush in grey using top down strokes to catch everything but the undersides. Then on top of that, I'm going to do exactly the same thing but with white and focusing more on the top edges and their faces. After testing all my options for contrast paint colours, I settled on Mantis Warriors Green, Griffhound Orange, Leviathan Purple, Basilicanum Grey, and Apothecary White. I'll be mixing all of these with Lamia Medium as well to make sure that they're sheer enough to see that underpainting underneath. I'm going to go from the lightest colours and work my way to the darker ones, which means we're starting with Apothecary White, which is going in the recesses of the ghost sheet to soften the shadows. I'm going to leave the top because I don't want to dull down that lovely bright highlight from the dry brushing. It barely needs anything. Next, I'll mix that white with a little bit of grey and purple to make this greyish lilac for the flesh. Perfect, that's nice and necrotic for all my zombies and fleshy scarecrows. But for the Frankenstein's monster's skin, I'm going to move on to our green. And whoa, that's vibrant. I love it. I'm also going to bring that green onto the other minis by painting things like this sock on the ghost's washing line, the stripes down the sides of the other player's shorts, and of course, you can't forget the balls. Next up is Griffhound Orange, and of course I'm starting with Mr. Pumpkin and his fellow gourds, but I'm also going to use it on all of the player's shirts so they're a cohesive team. Now, I need a brown, but I want to stick to the paints I have here, so I'm going to try mixing the purple, orange, and green and see what kind of shade I can get. Perfect, that will do for all of the straw, some of the wood and the twine details, but I also want a slightly darker brown just to break up those brown tones. So I'm going to mix in a bit more purple and that will do just fine. I'll paint this on the fur of the werewolves and the rest of the wooden bits. Next, their shorts are all looking a bit too white so they're getting a coat of Leviathan purple so they're matchy matchy. And now I'm going to make a light grey by mixing Basilicanum grey with Apothecary white and I'm going to use it as my metal and stone colour for the helmets and gravestones. Then our last colour will be pure Basilicanum grey for the armour plates, boots and any details that aren't yet painted like the cute little crows on the gravestones. 
And now the minis are done, I'm going to go back to those bases and over a black undercoat, I'm going to use this super pigmented purple from Ultra Krill to stipple on some splodges on the base so it looks like they're playing on a magical dark pitch. And then I'm going to dry brush them using Dawnstone to bring out that lovely texture. Then I'll chop those pesky foot pegs off the minis and stick them down with super glue. And you could call these minis totally done, but I just have a few more things I want to add to the bases to jazz them up a little bit. First is some of these dead grass tufts in a few small areas. Then to give these bases the proper football pitch treatment, I'm going to add in some white lines as if they're on a real playing field by just using a tiny bit of paint on my brush and running it across the top of the texture. And finally, I'm going to show you my favourite Halloween-y basing tip, which is to use these cool little birch tree seeds as tiny leaves. If you saw my Halloween terrain video, you'll already know how much I love these. You can get these from either your local birch tree or most places that sell miniature basing bits a quick varnish to seal everything in, and that's my team done! Okay, Guy here, now it's my turn, and let's figure out what colours I'm going to be using in my project. I grabbed some swatches of the paints that Hattie used for hers, and now essentially all we need to do to figure out the opposite colour palette is to invert the image. Ah, hmm, I mean, that's nothing I would ever choose given any options, so I suppose it's a good challenge. What have we got here? Um, the opposite of Mantis Warriors Green is a pretty decent lilac-y magenta. Iand in Yellow flips into a pretty generic mid-blue. Griffhound Orange becomes turquoise, and White obviously flips to black. And the deep, rich Leviathan Purple becomes <laughs> desaturated piss yellow. Good stuff. So I mounted all of the lizard dudes and then I primed everything white. My colour palette is going to need a pretty bright undercoat to give it half a chance of looking decent and vibrant. Now instead of dry brushing up to white from a dark primer like Hattie, I'm going to now apply the old Citadel shade paint, Nuln Oil Gloss, which is now discontinued unfortunately. It really doesn't like staying on flat surfaces, so sinks into the recesses really nicely, even on non-gloss varnish surfaces. It's a great paint tool and it's kind of a shame it's no longer in production. If anyone knows a good alternative, alternative or how to mix it up yourself, please let me know in the comments. Now while I waited for that wash to dry, I experimented with a few Army Painter speed paints to see what colours I had in my collection that were closest to the colour flip swatches. No real reason for using speed paints over contrast paints here, just thought I'd give them a bash for the hell of it. So yeah, Familiar Pink looks about right. Both Caribbean Ocean and Raging Sea are lovely colours, but uh, Caribbean Ocean is probably a bit closer to the swatch. Royal Robes for the blue? Yeah, lovely. There are a few not quite black black speed paints, but I went with grim black to keep things simple. Now there's no ideal yellow really, as they're all quite saturated. Mixing ochre clay with maize yellow kind of got the right tone, but man, that's a hideous colour and too dark. So let's just call maize yellow close enough and crack on, and maybe I'll lighten it up by mixing a bit of white in later. So these are the five colours I'll be using. Let's go! Now I could actually maybe use the box art for a guide here, so I used Caribbean Ocean on all of the skin on every single model, and that includes all of the horns and the spikes too. Next, a flash of the familiar pink on accent stuff like the feathers on the headdresses and the tongues of the chameleon dudes. Okay, time for a random guy fact. Even though I don't really care much about football, or soccer if you want, I was a tiny bit obsessed with the game Championship Manager 2 when I was a tween in the mid-90s. My brother loved it, and I obviously wanted to do all the stuff he did. I randomly chose to play in the German leagues, and always picked Borussia Dortmund. And as I have yellow and black in my palette, you better bloody believe that's what colour their kits are going to be. The main areas of the kit will be black, doing my best to leave the little white trim and stripes untouched to make them a solid yellow later. Some of the models also have gloves, so they got painted black too. Right, cracking out the blue royal robes, I use this to paint over the spines, scales and horns to give their bodies a two-toned effect. Also, blue balls. Once that quick step was over, I cracked out the white paint to just fix up any areas where I'd accidentally painted the armour plates or kit trim, and then moved on to maize yellow. I'm going to be covering two different things with this, and hopefully making them look discernible later. But first, all of the metal armour and trim is getting a basic coat of this yellow. You have to be a little bit careful when doing stuff like this, as if I was to accidentally go over the edge of the armour plates on the skin, for example, that yellow would stain the blues a gross green colour, which would be cool if I was doing it intentionally, but I'm not, so I won't. 
Okay, this is where we start to get slightly fancy. Given that I've got a transparent pinky paint to play with, I can use that to glaze over the yellow armored areas to create an orangey look, which if you stretch your imagination a little bit, could look slightly like cartoonish non-metallic metal. So let's give it a bash. Now, I'm not doing anything fancy here, basically just glazing a bit of magenta in a vague line down each particular section of armor. Any places it's a bit too heavy, I just wiped it with my finger and left it. I don't want to go overboard. I didn't paint any shadows in the kit trim like this though, because I don't want them to have that metallic look, just a plain yellow stripe of fabric. I did hit the snakes hiding inside the balls with some of the pink too though. Now we've done the shadowy streaks, I'm going to add some white into the yellow speed paint to make that desaturated, pissy yellow colour from the swatches, and using a detail brush this time, I'll just stipple and streak a few highlights onto the areas I didn't tone with magenta on the armour plates, so hopefully making it look like there's light catching those bits. I am not applying science to this, just going for quick and easy comic book vibes. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. I feel like it's almost as important what you don't paint. Just a careful touch here and there really will sell the effect. After that, I then just continued the process of adding a bit of white to all of the base colours I'd previously used, making lighter, desaturated versions of each paint just to carve out a couple of highlight colours on each areas, some musculature highlights with the turquoise, edge highlights on a few top facing scales with the blue, and the rachis of each feather. And some stretchy little streaks on the fancy frills too, why not? There's some ropes attaching their armour plates, so I mixed grim black with the yellow to make a sickly brown colour, and just base coated them, nice and simple. I also used this paint colour to schlop onto the brown bases Hattie prepared earlier, adding some white to the mix to brighten it up, and then using that to lightly dry brush the surfaces, and then stuck all the dudes down with super glue, and added some grassy tufts here and there to get that muddy, prehistoric jungle vibe. A quick blast of matte varnish to dull down any sheen from the paints we used, and a black rim, and done. Okay, that's it. Now, I suppose time to look at the finished models. Here are my Halloween-y Wolfenberg Crypt Stealers. I mean, I think you totally nailed that, like, Halloween autumnal colour palette, Patty. Well done. <gasps> Thanks. I definitely think you made the right choice starting from a black undercoat and then dry brushing to lighter colours because I think having the necromantic team look really kind of dark and dingy suits them really, really well. They're such cool sculpts as well, though. They're really, really nice. Whoever designed these, oh my God, they're great. Yeah, I really love these minis. But goddamn, that is a fierce gap on the old ghost sculpts, right? Whew, straight down the middle. That's push fit for you. And here are my guacamole crater gators. I like your colours. It's a lot brighter than how you normally paint, and I really like it. Yeah, I'm very much like a grim dark painter. <laughs> but yeah, it was actually quite a challenge painting something so bright. I suppose that's part of the fun of having no control over the paints you use, because you have to go with what you've been given. I like the coin as well. The gold effect you've gone for kind of works. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly. I wasn't expecting it to. I thought it would end up looking terrible, but actually it looks okay. No, it's good. And side by side, obviously, they look really, really contrasting. Uh, not just colours, but also like brightness, which I suppose is even more surprising because we essentially used the same techniques of underpainting and painting a transparent paint over the top. I genuinely really like both of these colour schemes and I think they'd look really good playing against each other on the table. And they took way less time to paint than my last Blood Bowl team, so that's always a bonus. So which team do you like best? The spooky boys or the stinky dinosaurs? Let us know in the comments. I do have a question for you though. Mm hmm? Why did you swatch cyan and yellow as one of my colours? Because it was one of the paints you had on your desk when you were painting. Did you not use it? I didn't use it. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed the paints you had on the table. Nope. Also, I didn't do any highlights because you said that we weren't doing highlights. And then I see that you've done a lot of highlights. <laughs> Sounds like a you problem. <laughs> so it turns out I stretched the parameters of the challenge slightly, but I still think the two teams look like they contrast each other and complement each other really well. Well, I don't know about you, Hattie, but I certainly feel like I've pushed my boundaries and got out of my comfort zone in this painting challenge, which I suppose is what it was all about, really. Yeah, no, I feel, I feel like your words. Yeah, I feel like it's something different. I've never painted like that before, and it was actually really fun. And, more importantly, pretty quick. Like, we both got ours painted up in like a full day hobby session each really. Now if you've enjoyed this painting challenge, well good news because next week we have another painting challenge that has been a long time brewing. You're going to have to 
guest, the Golden Demon Painter. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that video next week. And I suppose that's all we have to say. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Bye bye. So the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that um, there's only 11 playable minis here and the box definitely says 12 citadel miniatures and Hattie was like, where's the other one? I made a base for it. Well, turns out there was another one. So um, tune in to Midwinter Minis on Twitch and I will paint this on a live stream. <laughs>